Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to return to Beetlejuice and talk about yet another study that seems to discuss the idea behind its unusual dimming that happened in early 2020. And this time we might have actually been wrong about the reasons for its dimming. It doesn't seem like it was dust after all. It was something much cooler. Let's talk about this and welcome to Adamat. <laughs> I think this was definitely the biggest news of early 2020 when essentially we discovered that the famous star beetle just started dimming and the dimming itself was kind of hard to explain. And you probably remember how many people even speculated that maybe beetle juice is about to go supernova and create a very beautiful explosion in the night skies. But a lot of scientists were pretty sure that it's not going to go supernova and several studies even showed that the age that we estimated for Betelgeuse was probably wrong. It probably still has up to a million years in its lifetime. Mostly because today a lot of scientists believe that the origin of Betelgeuse lies in the um, basically a merger of two smaller stars. The two smaller stars merged creating this beautiful giant which also gives it a lot more energy and a lot more life before its final demise as a brilliant supernova. But even though a lot of scientists believe that we kind of solved the mystery of its dimming and we kind of understood what happened here, specifically an extremely large dust cloud that was released earlier by Betelgeuse, most likely a few years ago, that then spread across the star system of Betelgeuse and essentially covered the star, allowing us to kind of see this dimming effect. And here is what all of this looked like if you were to graph it, from essentially October of 2019 up to, well, today. So this dip right here, that's what the scientists were so excited about. And this dip right here was when the Betelgeuse was covered by the dust cloud. But a new study just recently released not so long ago argues against that because of the new observations. And here they're talking about observations in different frequencies of light that were not really studied that well yet. As always, you can find the study in the description below, but the idea here is that they looked at sub-millimeter range of frequencies that usually can easily go through any kind of dust and essentially allows us to see the entire galaxy and pretty much the entire universe because a typical space dust or any kind of dust at all doesn't really stop it. It just goes through it directly as if there's nothing there. And this type of light should not really change the luminosity of the star. In other words, if we were to look at Betelgeuse in sub-millimeter light frequency, the actual luminosity should remain the same because if it's dust, it shouldn't really change at all as the light travels through dust without any interference. But turns out, this light frequency also received a bit of a dip as well. Not as much as in visual light, but enough to raise the questions of what caused the dip in the beginning. In other words, space dust or any kind of a star dust or really just any dust at all coming from the star could no longer explain why the Betelgeuse was dimming a few months ago from when I'm making this video. Something else entirely was producing these effects, and even though Betelgeuse is now back to normal, we still would like to actually know what caused the dimming in the beginning. And currently, these scientists are not entirely sure. We don't think it's dust anymore though. The best explanation right now is in regards to, well, the only other reasonable explanation that doesn't involve aliens, I guess. That explanation is an extremely large star spot, really, really large star spot, kind of illustrated right here in this beautiful image. But the thing is here, you really have to take into consideration the size and the mass of the star to really wrap your head around how big the spot is. Remember, if we were to place Betelgeuse in the middle of our own solar system, it would go almost all the way to the orbit of Jupiter. The recent calculations for its mass suggest that its mass is anywhere from 17 to maybe 19 masses of the Sun, and its radius is about 750 times the radius of our Sun. This is a really, really large, really massive star. And at the same time, because it's a star that's considered to be a supergiant, essentially a star that's already expanded a lot bigger than it used to be, we also have to take into consideration the differences in structure of these stars. Very recently I talked about the, I guess, twin of Betelgeuse, so-called Antares. The new observations from Antares suggested that even though the radius here is also really, really large, about 750 radii of the Sun, it also has this really unusual region that actually is present around our Sun as well, but it's much, much smaller. And the region here is known as the chromosphere that expands all the way to almost the orbit of Uranus. 
which makes this star even larger than we can technically imagine. And so whatever happens inside the chromosphere, whatever effects it might have, are not really well known to us. We don't know exactly how these stars behave and what sort of effects they might have inside of these really, really thick atmospheres that they have. Our sun has chromosphere as well, but it's extremely thin, and we can't really see it very well, and we also can't really study it really well. So it's a very unknown area to us. And so we don't really know exactly what happened around Betelgeuse, but if it is a kind of a star spot that we expect this to be, it was probably something we've never really seen before and something that we kind of have trouble imagining. This spot here could be about half a billion miles across, or almost a billion kilometers across, and would be equivalent to lowering the temperature of the entire star by about 200 degrees. And although the scientists have previously seen star spots around other stars, and some of these were really really gigantic as you see right here, this still doesn't even compare close to what Betelgeuse was able to produce. So if this was a star spot, it was probably the largest such spot we've ever observed. Something that we'll definitely be able to confirm in the next year and a half or so, as essentially the star spins around and shows us the same sight again. The star spot probably would still be there to some extent, so we'll be able to see the dips again probably sometime uh, in the summer of 2021. Either way though, seeing such a tremendously large star spot out of nowhere is a bit mysterious. It definitely suggests that the star is going through some major changes on the inside and probably on the outside, and something is probably happening to the star, we're just not entirely sure what yet. Also compared to the visual light, the light in sub-millimeter range did not decrease as much, it was only about 20% reduction compared to about 40% in visual light. So there's probably something else here at work, including possible dust as well. And also we know that our own sun, for example, has a very active and very predictable star spot cycle. So maybe this is what Betelgeuse is going through as well. Maybe what we're observing is essentially the beginning of the very active spot cycle that these large stars go through as well. But the only way we'll know for sure is through future observations in the next couple of years to try to see if we can detect these demon effects yet again. For now, it looks like Betelgeuse is back to its normal luminosity and hasn't really exhibited any changes in the last few weeks or so, but you never know what's going to happen next year. So once we learn more about Betelgeuse, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. For now, it seems like we've discovered one of the coolest and biggest star spots ever. At least that's the implications from this particular study. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot, and alternatively you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.